Here we're doing stand-up shows October 20th through the 23rd in Florida and Buffalo. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for tickets. We just talked about this in our last segment. COVID, children extremely low risk confirmed by study. That's from the BBC. Uh, that's from July 9th. The overall risk of children becoming severely ill or dying from COVID, extremely low. Now, we saw another article from The Guardian saying that uh, children have a higher rate of uh, heart inflammation, four to six times more likely to get that and need to go to the hospital than they would be needed to go to the hospital if they caught COVID. Um, so just keep that in mind. So this goes to the idea that we sh about should we vaccinate children? Well, according to this study, it seems ridiculous if we did that. Uh, but guess what? The New York Times is out there scaring the hell out of everyone about this. So this is from Yahoo News. New York Times retracts massive exaggeration of children hospitalized by COVID-19. This is from October 8th. Um, in an article published by the New York Times, readers were told that nearly 900,000 children have been hospitalized with COVID-19 since the pandemic began. Now, that was a, that was a slight exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know how much they exaggerated it by? Well, the actual number is 63,000. So they said 900,000. The actual wasn't even, didn't even break 100,000. They said 900, almost a million, didn't even break 100,000. So they're making it up. They were making it up. And as the science shows, the only children that are at risk of illness, serious illness from the COVID, are people, children who have comorbidities, children who are already cancer patients, stuff like that. So they already say, they, so Dr. Malone, when he was on this show, said the way you treat an outbreak in a pandemic like this is you vaccinate the most vulnerable, meaning the elderly and people with comorbidities. And then it spreads and becomes endemic, meaning it becomes more contagious, less deadly. That's how we're supposed to be treating this. But we're not. And now they want to. So there's a big push to give it to children. And you have articles like this in The New York Times that say 900,000 kids have been hospitalized with COVID since the pandemic. Turns out it's only 63,000. Which means the article exaggerated the number of hospitalizations by 837,000 cases. Now, if I did that at this show, if I made a mistake that was that egregious, they would take my channel down. New York Times, all they have to do is print a retract. I'm sorry, we got that wrong. And they'll print it on p page 50. That's all they have to do. No one's going to call them fake news forever because they got this unbelievably wrong as they get most big things wrong. The exaggeration was included in a report on the debate surrounding wet whether or how to vaccinate children. And so let me just, let me uh, bring in Max Blumenthal from the gray zone. Uh, Max is here. Uh, he's been uh, on the forefront uh, commenting about uh, the way the, governmental bodies are handling the COVID outbreak. Max, what do you have to say about this bogus story from the New York Times? Well, these bogus stories actually began months ago when it became clear that Big Pharma and the CDC, which re reaps enormous amounts of money from Big Pharma through its CDC foundation, as well as Fauci, who ha enjoys a longstanding relationship with Moderna, wanted to vaccinate people under 18 who suffer, who, who face almost no risk of dying from COVID-19, except for those who have comorbidities, as you pointed out. And I mean, there's, there's, there's a, you know, obvious profit-based motive for that, but there is also now just kind of an obsession with getting as many shots in arms as possible. So we saw the narrative develop right around the time the Delta variant arrived, that tons of children were flooding hospitals. And I remember there was an article in the Texas Tribune that said that something like 
I don't know, 500,000 or 250,000 children, I'll have to go back and find it, had been hospitalized in just a matter of weeks in Texas, which was, you know, supposed to be, it was one of the epicenters of Delta variant related hospitalizations. And then I went back and I saw all the blue check marks sharing the article. Then I noticed maybe a week later, the article featured a little, a, a very long correction at the bottom. And it said that they had overestimated the number of uh, COVID hospitalizations in children by the same rate as the New York Times, and that most of the children who had been hospitalized actually were, were hospitalized for a dangerous respiratory infection called RSV, but that, you know, you hear very little about that um, because the authorities, the public health authorities and big pharma are not pushing this mass, vac mass vaccination campaign for RSV, even though it is dangerous. So now we see another exaggeration, and it's driven, it's clearly driven by this lobbying push for mass vaccination of everyone from six months up, which is a highly questionable, dubious move. Uh, if you look at the main advisory arm on vaccination in the UK, they advised against vaccinating or requiring vaccinations for under 18, those under 18 because of the cost benefit analysis they performed, that it's much safer in their view for a younger person to get COVID-19 and survive it than to take the risk, the heightened risk of myocarditis, particularly in young adolescent boys, which is now somewhere around one in 5,000, maybe even higher. And if you consider the what myo myocarditis can do to your heart, how much it can debilitate a heart, um, you know, or the heart of a young athlete, someone who might be an NBA star like Kyrie Irving. And I know a lot of parents who are struggling with this right now, parents who might have children in the LA USD school district in Los Angeles, which is mandating vaccines for those 12 years and up. Uh, and they have sons who are athletes and they're worried about this. I mean, if you go by that rate of one in 5,000, then extrapolate the entire population of LA extrapolate from the entire population of LA, the amount of myocarditis cases, that's a large number. Uh, that it's, it, it, I mean, it's very ethically dubious to take that kind of risk with children who face no risk of dying. And then we have to look at the whole death count. Obviously, COVID-19 has been dangerous for a lot of people. It's hospitalized many people, it has killed people. But if we look at the case of Colin Powell, who died today, who had multiple myeloma, a severely lethal blood cancer, who was 84 years old, and who also had Parkinson's, a severely debilitating chronic disease. Colin Powell's death with COVID-19 is actually typical of most of the deaths we've seen that are said to be from COVID-19. I'm looking right now at the CDC's website and if you look, search the CDC's website for com comorbidities and other court conditions, it says that table three shows that for over 5% of these deaths, COVID-19 was the only cause mentioned on the death certificate. So for only 5% of deaths, COVID-19 was the only cause. Those are people who died of COVID, according to the CDC. For the rest, 95%, and I'm reading from the CDC's website right now, data as of October 10th of this year, there were 4.0 additional conditions or causes per death. That means an average of 4.0 additional comorbidities to COVID-19. And this was in 95% of deaths. So this is Colin Powell. This is the majority of deaths from COVID-19, according to the CDC, are people who are already on the brink of death. It doesn't mean we shouldn't protect people against COVID-19 <laughs> within reason, but it means that Colin Powell, it wasn't like he was just, you know, happily skipping down the street and like running laps and doing a triathlon and then COVID-19 came along and took him out and then he was, he was coughed on by an unvaccinated person. It means that this is the kind of the, the, the typical case of someone who dies from COVID-19 and he was fully vaccinated 
We keep being told, oh, the, not, we, the, this is a pandemic of the unvaccinated, that 99% of deaths are in the unvaccinated. Those are old statistics. Colin Powell is now typical, someone who is fully vaccinated, who, but who no longer had an immune system. We're doing stand-up comedy in Florida, in West Palm Beach, and Dania, and, and then we're going to Buffalo, Baltimore, Tempe, and Portland. Go to jimmydorkcomedy.com for a link for all our tickets.